Well, hello and welcome back to the Finding Freedom podcast. So excited that you're here with me today. We're going to be recording episode 71, which is a question I'm really excited about talking about. I wouldn't really necessarily call it a question. Um, The topic is, but God, they need you more. Have you ever made the statement like, God doesn't want to deal with my problems. They are too small compared to X, Y, and Z or compared to so-and-so. If so, today's episode is for you, my friend. So I want to remind you right here, right now, that God is not just the God of big problems. I could end the episode at that right there, but we're obviously going to dive in a little bit more. But he's the God of little problems too. He's not going to look at your problem and think, well, that's just too trivial. That's just too small. There's no way that I have time. I'm God to answer this little tiny question about finding your car keys. Like God wants to be a part of every aspect of our lives. And so when we start to put him in this little box, or I guess I should say big box and say, well, God only wants to talk with me if I am asking him you know, for answers for big things, then we're missing out on that close, intimate relationship with our father. We don't only go to our spouse for the big things. We talk to our spouse about the little things that frustrate us, the little things that we need their help with. And so God is the same way. He wants us to come to him with the the small and with the big. And so honestly, and another way, another way to look at this is we should be going to God with our small problems before they become a big problem. If we're constantly going to God for just the big thing, that means that we've probably been ignoring him or not inviting him into all of the small things that led to the big thing. So if we're neglecting to ask God for help because we think he's too small or it's too small for him, we're showing kind of a lack of faith and we're expressing to him that, um, I don't know, that we feel like we can do it all, that we feel like we have it, like we're good. This is just so small. I can handle it all on my own and I don't need God. And we're kind of like usurping God's authority and we're deciding what he should or shouldn't be able to help us with. And really that's kind of the opposite of being like humble. And I think a lot of times we we think, well, I don't want to share it with God because it's okay. Like, it's just, it's so small. It's not that important. And maybe we say that because we want to be humble and we don't want to feel like the complainer or, I don't know, the the person who just is whiny all the time. But God doesn't look at it that way. God looks at us going to him as a gift because it is. like, And the fact that we get to go to him, that's a gift. And so... I guess the the best way to put this is to ask ourselves if we have ever been able to handle anything better than God could have. That's that's kind of the honest question that I want everybody to ask themselves today is, have you ever handled something and feel like you did it better than God ever could have? Whether that be making dinner or making a, a career decision or a financial decision or decision for your family. Like, do you ever think that you could make a better decision than God can? If so, sorry to tell you that you can't. <laughs> There's no nice way to put that, but it's not possible. Like it's, it's not possible. There is no way that we can ever give a better answer than what God can give us. And so when we're trying to handle things in our own strength, we're wasting time. We are taking time away from what we could be doing about what God tells us to do And we're wasting it on just thinking about what we think we should do. And that's where like that time is wasted because all of the time that we spent worrying or thinking or planning or doing or not doing, but planning is wasting the time of what we could have been putting into doing what God was actually asking us to do in the situation, in the solution that he gives us for that situation. And so James 4, 2 is a verse that came to mind when I first thought of this topic We have not because we ask not. If we're not asking God, he's not going to give us an answer. We're not inviting him in. He's not going to come in. Like he's not a God that just barges down the door and enters his way into your life and says, let me fix everything. Like he wants you to say, God, I can't handle this. I don't know where my car keys are. And God, I don't know what my next decision is for my career. Please help me. He cares about both of those issues equally. And so in times of trouble, we need to be going to him no matter how big or small. And when we're heavy laden, we should be leaning on him, right? We don't have to be on level ground with what other people are going through. There was one time I was in a small group and um, the the person I'm going to talk about may or may not listen to this podcast. So I'll be cautious with that. She'll know who she is if this was her. 
Um, but we had our small group and we were going through a really in-depth study that was going into some really heavy, hard, dark things. And she stayed after for one after one of the group sessions and she said, Brooke, I just don't think that I can stay in this group. And I was like, why? What's wrong? What happened? And she's like, you guys all have such stories, like such testimonies of faith and overcoming things. And I've known God my whole life and I just don't have a testimony to share like you guys do. So I just don't feel like I have like value to add. And I was like, are you kidding me? That is amazing that you have gotten this far in your life and not had a trial. So one, now you're going to learn from us how to handle trials should or when they come. Because the Bible says if, now he doesn't say if, he says when trials come, when trouble comes. But so you'll have an idea of how to handle those things when you get there. But also like what a gift that you haven't had to go through those trials. That's a testimony in itself of your obedience and your walk with God. Not to say that if you're obedient, you won't have trials because we know that's not true. Like I just said, but like the fact that you have walked faithfully in his path and you've not had any obstacles that have felt big to you. I'm sure we all have had obstacles, but you've not had any obstacles that have felt big to you. That's a win and that's something to be celebrated and that's a testimony in and of itself. And so you can either celebrate that testimony. I wouldn't say either. You can celebrate that testimony and you can learn from other people who have those big, dark, scary, sad testimonies. You can learn from what they did, from the the mistakes they made and from the things that God showed them through that. And you can learn how you might handle that situation should you ever find yourself in that situation. And so when we're troubled, like, it it matters. I, I feel like I keep repeating the same thing. It matters. Like, no matter whether, again, we feel like it's too small for him or it's this big thing, it, they both matter to him. And I think this is how the enemy works. So the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we think, well, I don't need to go to God because it's just too small of a matter for such a big God. Like he has so many other things to worry about. But what if that's the enemy like wanting to stop us from going to God? Because what happens when we go to God? When we go to God, it's showing our reliance on him. When we go to God, it's building our relationship with him. When we go to God, we're getting closer to God. We're drawing near to him. And what does the Bible say? Draw near to him and he will draw near to us. So as we go to God with those small problems and with the medium size and with the big and the large and extra large and all, when we go to him for all of those things, the enemy isn't welcome in that spot because we're inviting God in and we're kicking the enemy out or God's kicking the enemy out for us because we're saying, no, 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 no. I want him. He knows what he's doing. That guy down there, he don't know what he's doing. I'm not going to follow him. He's not allowed in this situation. God is going to tell me what to do. God is going to lead me through this. God is going to guide me through this. And so the enemy wants us to believe that our need is too small because if we don't go to God for it, then he kind of has his place in our lives. And he gets to say like, yep, oh, got that one for, from God. We don't want to let him get that right. And so when we're trying to deal with, with the problems in our own power instead of God's, we're really giving the power over to the enemy. Cause then if God's not invited in, like the world is, and if the world is invited in, we know that Satan is the king of the world or not the king of the world, but like the ruler of the world. And so he is controlling those situations. And then it keeps us in isolation. How many of us have ever gone through a problem? And maybe you have a friend and that friend is going through something tragic, like the loss of a baby. And you are just like heartbroken for them. But then you are I don't know, you have a, a fight with your spouse and you need some some biblical counsel from a friend that you trust. And you want to ask her for like how you should go about having the, the hard conversation with your husband or, you know, what you should do about the car trouble you're having. And you feel like you can't ask her because, well, I mean, she's going through so much. Like what if that, like that creates isolation? What if you went to her, your friend and said like, I don't have anything compared to what you're struggling with in my opinion. This is so small compared to yours, but like I'm struggling too. You come together in your struggles. You come together with Christ at the center and you let him in on those conversations and in those situations. And then you work together through it with your friend who's going through the tragic loss and with yourself who's going through something small. Both situations need God. You need to know what to do about your car trouble or your marriage. And she needs to know how in the world she's going to get up out of bed tomorrow. And you get to do that together because you're both being vulnerable. You're both 
sharing what you need God for. And it opens the door for more conversation, for more vulnerability, for more truth to come out with one another and for God to enter the situation as a whole. And I think that we... I think if we don't go, if we don't talk with God about those small problems, like I said before, they go on and they become the bigger problem, right? And so if we don't handle our little marriage fight that we had, we don't bring it to God and say, God, I need you to help me or God and my friend, I need you to kind of walk me through what this looks like, then that could lead to divorce. If we don't take the little problems with our children of discipline, then that could lead to our kids someday being in prison because they're undisciplined. And that's not to say that everybody that's in prison is not disciplined. That is a whole thing that I'm not even going to open. I don't mean it in that way. But the little problems with our kids that happen now could lead to big problems if we don't handle them now, right? And um, I'm trying to think of other examples. Like if we are feeling like angry about a a small situation. We call it small. And then we feel upset about another situation and then another situation and then another situation. You think of like a pot of water that's like the heat is on it. The heat is, you know, the stove is on the the pot of cold water sitting on it, but the heat is kind of starting to rise and then the water starts to boil. But what happens if you leave the pot on the stove full of water for too long? The water starts to boil, but then it starts to boil over. And that's what happens when we have all of these little problems in our lives, all these little things that we think, well, God just wouldn't want to deal with this. All of those things are festering and they're sitting in that hot pot and they're just starting to boil, starting to boil. And then more is added in, more is added in, more heat keeps coming in. And then boom, now it's exploding out of the top and you have this big mess. What if we had just gone to God and added like an ice cube? He could add his little ice cube to cool the water down a little bit. And then he could add another ice cube. And then maybe he could pour some cold water into the the pot. It wouldn't boil over, right? It'd still be warm because you're still dealing with the things. You're still battling things. You're still going through the situations. And they might feel small, but if as you solve each one, it's like God adds that ice cube as he solves it. And then it's like a little bit less hot in that in that pot. And then he adds another one because he solved that problem or he helped you solve that problem. So then the water's a little cool there. So if we are letting God do what only God can do, then those small situations don't get to boil over because we are handling them with him at the center. And so Satan wants our, our little doubts and fears to go on and to pile up so that they become big issues that eventually separate us from God. Because what happens when we have all these little things that come together or the one big thing and the whole pot overflows? Then we're like, why, where were you, God? Like, why did you let this happen? And we, then we blame him. And, and that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants us to get so beat down and so overwhelmed that we blame God and then we turn away from him and then we're following who? We're following Satan at that point, right? And so let's think about it this way. If you're a mom, most of you are probably moms because I'm a mom. And if you follow me, you're probably a mom. So we have children. They have a problem in, our, in their lives. They have something that they're going through at school or they have something going on at church or a situation that they're facing and they don't come to us. How would we feel? We'd be like, bud. I'm right here. Like, I want, I'm I'm here to help you. Why didn't you ask me? God's not any different than that. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your anxieties on him, all your cares, because he cares for you. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say just the big ones. It says all your anxieties and all your cares. If that little thing is causing an ounce of anxiety or an ounce of fear or an ounce of doubt or an ounce of what if, you need to go to God. And if that big thing is causing it, you need to go to God. Like we need God in both situations, all your cares and all of your anxieties on him. And then he'll, and he cares for you. And so the word casting in this verse, I took this note because it was really important. Like the word casting in this verse is eparipto. I don't know if that's how you say it properly. I think that is eparipto. And it means to throw or place upon. So it's not just saying like, Go to God and talk to him and have it be so nice. Like, no, take your baggage and throw it to God. Place it on him and say, God, it's yours. I don't want it. Take all of it. Take the big stuff. Take the small stuff. It's all yours. Imagine God wants us to throw our cares to him. He wants us to place them upon him. He wants to bear all the cares, regardless of how big or small they are. He's the God 
of the oceans, like the God who makes the waves roll and who makes the night turn into day and the day turn into night, who created the heavens and the earth. And we think, I keep going back to this example, finding our car keys is too small for him. That matters. If it matters to us, it matters to him. His eyes are upon the smallest of birds. Matthew 6, 26 talks about God feeding the birds. He cares so much for all of his creatures that he ensures that they're taken care of. And that in, that includes taking care of the problems that you're facing. And so if we let him in to be a part of our every day, our every moment of our lives, he can change things little by little. But like I said before, he's not going to force his way in. He wants us to welcome him in, to invite him in, to let him in. So the next time that you find yourself asking or saying, this is just too small for God. It's too much. He's, you know, got so much on his plate. He's so busy. God is just so popular. God wants to hear from you. He wants you to call him. Hey, God, I need you. I need you right now. I'm struggling and I need you. Help me through this situation. But then also repent. If you've been struggling with going to him, repent for limiting the all-knowing, all-powerful, limitless God that created the universe. If we're not going to him, we need to repent of that and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I thought I could do this on my own. I'm sorry that I tried to do this on my own. I'm sorry that I went to so-and-so before I came to you. Like, please forgive me. And then ask him to help you through it. And watch how that starts to change your relationship with him. If you want to grow with God, welcome him in to every single aspect of your life. Every part of it. And when you do that, he'll work. And watching him work in the small things gives you faith to work that he'll do even more in, like impossible works in the big things. If you say, God, please help me find my car keys. I really am going to be late for work today or to school drop off. And I really just need to know where my two-year-old put the car keys. Please help me. And then you look under the couch cushion and your car keys are right there. And you're like, I looked under the couch cushion three times. They were not there. That was God. But if he provided for you in that little moment for your little car keys, imagine what you might feel when you are going through a horrendous time in your life and you need him. You'll have a little bit more faith because he helped you find the car keys. He helped you know what words to say to, in the hard conversation that you had to have. He helped you with the small change in your job. If he's helping you in those small things, your faith is being built for the big things too. And you'll have and I don't want to say an easier faith, but you'll have, you'll have more testimony to, to lean back on to say, God showed up for me in that. Why wouldn't he show up for me in this? That matters. So I hope that this episode has encouraged you to lean on God and to not be afraid to ask him for help with the small things because they do matter too. He cares about them. He cares for you. He wants to hear from you. He wants to be welcomed into your life. And if you allow him to be a part of the big things, Those will be special moments with him. And then those will lead to, or I'm sorry, if you allow him to be part of the small things, those will be the special moments with him that lead into the big things. And I pray that you don't have to face the big, hard things. But if you do, at least you'll have the faith that you watched him help you through with the small things. And now he's going to, you know, with full assurance that he's going to meet you right where you are right now. Because he was there then. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So if he was there for that, then he's definitely going to be here for this, right? Think about that. And like I said, if you feel like you have not been relying on God for those small things, I want you to finish this episode out and take some time to just pray and and ask God for forgiveness, repent, for, for limiting him on what he can and will do because he wants all of it. He wants all of you. And if you give it to him, it'll change the rest of your life. So I hope this episode is helpful for you. I hope you got something big out of it or small. (laughs) No pun intended. Actually, it was intended. Um, And I just pray that this encourages you to really up your prayer life and ask him to be a part of every little thing and big thing that you're doing. And um, I'll chat with you next time. Have a good day, guys.